Alright, Sozu Star means no potions for the whole run. Definitely going to be a bit of a challenge. This is perfect. This is why we take uh, Pandora's box, because sometimes you just get beautifulness. I'm down for some defect. Let's do it. I'm warning you all, it's going to be a boss swap. As it often is on defect, not a lot of pathing options in this Act 1. Oh yeah, let me update the streak. It is definitely not at 1. <laughs> Zero. No streak going on right now. Man. Alright, Sozu Star it means no potions for the whole run. Definitely going to be a bit of a challenge. We go for our Burning Elite. So much harder without any potions, though. It's a three Elite route I could take. Even harder without potions. I don't want to go to a shop this way. Go this way. Who needs potions when you have powers? That's right. I think this path gets me killed up the middle. Let's go left. We do have four energy per turn to make up for the... Stinky Sozu. Eliminating our potions. And there's a lot of cool things the defect can do with a couple points of energy. Definitely going to need to take a streamline so that we have enough damage to get through our first elite here. Tempting maybe to take a skim with the Sozu, but we have to take the first big damage card we see. Streamline will do just fine. With how risky this path is, feels kind of uncomfortable removing a card. Actually, no, 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 no. Let's get rid of dual cast. With no starting orb, dual cast on turn one can be a really sad time. So let's eliminate the possibility that we draw it. Entirely. Of course, now I'm going to immediately get offered a dark orb card and regret my choice, but... Okay. These are not dark orbs. These are the other kind of orb. A good orb. A blue orb. A frost orb. Now, there may well be a world where it's cold snap over glacier, but I'm gonna take a glacier. Giving us immense blunk. And a two frost orbs. Blorbs, that's right. Good old blorbs. Fire Potion sure would have been nice for the upcoming Elite, but... Sozu says Nozu. Chaos to channel a random orb. I like Beam Cell quite a bit. Zero cost of vulnerable gives you better front load, especially when paired with something like Streamline, to allow us to donk our way through Gremlin Knob and Lagavulin. And we're already quite good against Sentries with a Glacier in the deck. And the Beam Cell. Yeah, it's acceptable for random orb generation, but we need to put attacks in this deck to deal with Knob. Thirteen plus nine is less than twenty-four. Oh wait! Hooray! Perfect. And I will definitely take a ball lightning here for a little bit more front-loaded damage and an additional orb generation. We need we need big damage to get through Elite. I think normally I would have said upgrade Streamline here, but I'm strongly considering upgrade Beam Cell for the additional vulnerable turn. Just 
respectable, though. I mean, if we draw them together, I'd prefer the streamline upgrade, of course. But being able to get three additional damage out of each strike or ball lightning, pretty good. Try this. Oh, yep. Yep, made the correct choice. Upgrading the beam cell. Did I? Well, that's a bit of a problem. Good job, Beam Cell. You did it. You did it, Beam Cell. Ooh, and a fission. Move all your orbs, gain an energy, and draw a card for each orb removed. Really like that, especially with no Gremlin knobs ever again. With a Glacier. Second Ball Lightning is quite good as well. Would I agree that the Defect Starter Relic drops off quickly after Act 1? Yes. Yes. The lightning orb becomes pretty quickly irrelevant compared to the scaling bonuses of the other characters. Hit points are always valuable. Cards are more valuable the later you are in the run, as your card quality will increase. And likewise for energy. Part of the reason I like to give it away in this fission. Hopefully that's not wrong. Upgrade the fission. Is that wrong? Might be wrong. Oak the orbs, gain an energy, and draw a card for each orb. Oaked. Oh, and the data disc starts us out with a point of focus. Love to see it. Lad, stay asleep. Then Glacier next turn. Can I aggro now? I think so. Spark Ladder is alive and well. Just playing some A20 because I want to today. Not mean the ladder has perished. That's right, we have four energy every turn. I'm gonna crush this. No chance. Yeah, that's a really good turn to draw Fission on. The card draw and the Energon. Hopefully a kill on this turn before this attack hits us. Six, six, six is 18, plus eight is not 31. Still not 31. But definitely not bad, we get a whetstone to upgrade two random attacks. That's going to be very valuable with Beam Cell alone. Sync's early algorithm and claw. I'm down for an algorithm this early. Card levels up its block every time we play it. Becomes very big by the end of the heart fight. We thought Fission removed the orb slots, so you never took it. Fission used to give you orb slots. Way back when. Two upgraded strikes? I'm honestly okay with that. No problems. And I want more orb generating cards, so I'm gonna pick fights with combats for the moment here. Wouldn't mind a boot sequence either. Oh yeah, we also want to level up the algorithm, which also necessitates necessitates picking combats here.
Tempest Fission is a favorite of mine. Fights with combats, that's right. Picking fights with combats. As opposed to picking events without combats. Take the Tempest. Tinks and Storm, kind of interesting, but they're hard to take as your first power. Okay. We go strike Tempest and we try to kill the front guy, take 10. Possibly take 20? Yikes. Do it this way. Yeah, good. Still hurt like heck, but fine now. Okay. Go down to 15 and we'll take an event now. Even more money. I'm rich! Could have taken the Regret Curse there with the Darkstone Periapt, but going into Hexaghost, uh, thanks. Or Hexaghost. Feels like I'm gonna need to upgrade the Streamline here, just to make sure we have the damage output to kill this boss. The Frost Orb should keep us safe. Tempest is quite a good upgrade for plus one to the number of orbs, but it's uh, an exhausting card, so we have to we have to upgrade something we get to play multiple times in this fight. Better than wrong, nothing. Probably stay on three frost orbs for the rest of this fight. Maybe two and one lightning orb. A two and one lightning orb. Exoghost is already almost dead. Cell putting in the work. Fine, we have 500 gold, and with a deck that already generates quite a few orbs, a biased cog is perfect here to give us four points of focus right away. That makes our frost orbs block for a heck of a lot, and it makes the lightning orbs hit real hard. Very, very powerful. Amplify has nothing to duplicate, so never, never take that as your first, you know, if you have no powers. And All for One returns back all zero-cost cards. Currently only the Beam Cell, or Fission if we didn't play it, or maybe Streamline. It's starting to get somewhere. But this is a, a really easy bias cog for me. From here out, we're looking for ways to get Artifact, or ways to... Super Transform, by the way. Uh, or ways to remove the debuff of the bias cognition, so... I think shops are extremely valuable, uh, even if we didn't have 500 gold right now. Choice between Slaver's Collar, giving us energy during boss and elite fights, Coffee Dripper, giving us energy but preventing us from resting, or the Pandora's Box to get 8 transforms, 4 defends, 4 strikes. We've got a great way to block without these defends in our Frost Orbs plus Focus. 
I really like a transform here. We can get a lot more orb generation, card draw, energy generation, you name it. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Three extremely good powers. Compile driver for card draw, two FTLs for card draw, cool headed for orb gen and card draw, and ball lightning for more orb gen. This is perfect. This is why we take uh, Pandora's box, because sometimes you just get beautifulness. We even have echo form to duplicate genetic algorithms sometimes. What an amazing set of cards. This deck just got so good. Our primary concern now, get to a store. Hey look, store. Only one, unfortunately. I'm going to take a couple of events, because I want... Well, one, because I have Darkstone Periapt. And two... Don't want to be in com... Well, maybe... Let's see how our first combat goes. Don't go this way. That's just crazy. Dang it. Ooh, jerks. It's a stack deck? I don't think so. Too many of our cards don't go to the discard pile. It's like a very reasonable... Go right to the shop. Aww. Yeah, Echo Form Apparitions. We're not losing any current health. Sure. Receive three apparitions. This will give us time to set up the powers. Once we have Echo Form and our orb slots and focus down, we're pretty much invincible. So the apparitions allow us to be impervious on turns one, two, and three. Thinking about taking the curse here. We save 85 gold and we gain 6 max health, and I can remove the curse right away. We don't have that many good removals either. We got a really high roll on the Pandoras. There's not one garbage card in this deck. The thing I'd remove is Zap, and Zap is actually decent. Rob the Vagrant. Get a Pendib. Every tenth attack is Dublid. Shop offers us another Frost Orb source. Good. Do I ever buy question card? Not sure about that. <laughs> Seems like such an investment for 285 gold. I will take the cold snap. Sure. So with 384 gold... Not a lot here. We can't get any use out of cauldron. Can't buy these potions. We want these commons. Or static discharge. Kind of cute with apparitions, but we can't really... I mean, we have so much frost, we can't really not block, right? Ah. Question card giving you one additional card per bite to look at is a way to... Create more rare cards and to see more upgraded cards. I'm gonna take it here. 
Partially just so that we see one more rare card after our boss. Plus there was nothing else I wanted in that shop. Immune! Are we going to be strong enough that I can stall for Echo Genetic here? Yeah, question cards are pretty rare purchase, uh, along with, say, egg relics and singing bowl. Anytime you're spending a lot of money on a relic that doesn't do anything immediately, you really have to be in a, an advantageous position to be able to do that. RSC, thank you so much for the five months. That's your one sub. Appreciating that continued support. Upgrade or go to that elite? I have so many good upgrades. Upgrade. Right. Some argument for double energy, some argument for recursion. Probably not, though. Not our act boss. Okay, we need to upgrade one apparition before this fight. Let's go upgrade now, and then we'll opt into this elite. Lots of good upgrades here. I like Electro, Apparition no longer Ethereal, Acidor for another Orb Slot, Bias Cog for more Focus, Cool Headed for more Draw. All acceptable answers. Get the Bias up. We're going to be playing it as soon as we draw it in most of the upcoming fights. Want the Sozu necessarily, but <laughs> what we definitely want to do is take Inlaw's uh, gift here because Inlaw's gift plus question card is going to be insane rare card generation. This deck really appreciates its additional energy. I'm going to give up the pen nib to get Inlaw's gift. Triple the chance of finding rare cards from combat rewards. I think we'll see this go off quite a bit. We could have given up the Sozu to re-enable ourselves to gain uh, potions there. It'd have been pretty cute. She didn't go the way I wanted. Made a mistake. Yep. Mistakes were made. Should not have played that compiler over at the end. Hyper beam? More like diaper beam. Two cards that say block on them. Thank you.
Okay, grateful for being attacked on turn one here. Means we got an extra turnip set up. Set up that I used to play Ecker for him. Don't I? Next turn, rather, and be able to play them. Form in play. Almost forgot about that. Another rare card? How many have we gotten so far? All of them. We will definitely take the second bias cognition offered to us, causing our focus to go stratosphere. To infinity land. Second upgrade, let's bring one of the apparitions now, so that we have that upgraded for bronze automaton. Yeah, don't want to do another elite. Be fine. Famous last words. Okay, skipping out on Echo Form for sure to get Electro down. us a lot of max HP for a deck with Apparitions. 55. We're offered Loop versus a Cold Snap. Loop is a pretty good way to scale these orbs up even further. Opposed to a third Cold Snap? Feels unnecessary, though. We've got so much orb generation already. Mostly don't have the ability to upgrade this loop in any reasonable time frame. I don't think I'm gonna take it. Does not say plus, exactly. We can't afford the upgrade. We need to get the other biased upgraded. We need to upgrade capacitor as well. Just don't have time for you, loop. I'm sorry. Not over. What? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's not what I expected to draw. I'm a ghost. So shall I. Wait, what? Gotta dupe the genetic here. No.
All that done just so that we could play Genetic Algorithm with Echo Form, which permanently upgrades it twice. Getting us a little bit ahead on the block game in the long term. There's the Core Surge. Deal 11 damage, gain 1 artifact, which can block a Core Surge, or can block a Bias Cognition debuff from affecting us. Good stuff. So when it comes to Apparitions and Bites, my big question for Apparitions is can my deck within... with three turns of invulnerability, can my deck set up into a winning position? Either like, um, either killing all the enemies by doing a lot of damage, or can I set up into some kind of block combo? So things that work really well with Apparitions are... Um, really good front-loaded damage, so lots of Poison and Catalyst on Silent, lots of Strength and Limit Break on Ironclad. Or, really setup heavy decks that just need a couple turns, whether you're doing Frost Focus with Echo Form, um, or something like Barricade on Ironclad. This would be... Lightning Orbs. Try not to take 12 here. Go ball lightning to 14 times 3 plus 7. Not enough to kill. Like this then. Good, yes, that is better. Play the Algo on turn one. My mistake. Double Glacier. Betcha. Trampage, thank you so much for the tier one sub and the 20 months. Glad to hear you got the electricity back, even if just for a little bit. Stay warm and stay safe. And Terra. 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 Thank you so much for the Prime sub and the three months. On support. Upgrade capacitor? This deck is in a weird spot at this point. Just do this, not play this vision yet. So, these guys steal the rarest card in the draw pile. We have four rares, so there's a whole bunch of different things you can take. Might as well use both of these. My Electro. It's a bit rude. Down Echo Form next turn, looks like. Don't want to draw it now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Whatever, we could probably just block the Hyper Beam the old fashioned way here. Yeah, we're good. We get to double Algo. And then some. Huzzah! Fission! You fool. Only made me stronger. that Tempest we can double too, right? Double Electro ain't bad either.
so much focus in so many orb slots, it's gonna be a good time for us. Okay. Leave how well we're doing with a Sneko, or uh, Sneko. Sozu Star, thank you. Yo. And a choices, choices here. Two really good options. Second echo form is a really powerful thing, since if you echo an echo, then you're twice as echoey. Or we can take a seek, which helps us get the echo form in play more early, or potentially other stuff. Although one could argue if we're using seek to find echo form, we should just take the second echo form. Seek is more flexible, though. We can find Glacier, get Fission, find Apparitions. I'm going to take the Seek here. I think the consistency with no potions, uh, I think I want Seek here. With Echo Form in the deck, I'm not taking a Velvet Choker, limiting us to six cards per turn, but I could see the Nuclear Battery being pretty good, starting us out with a Plasma Orb. That's more energy right away, and even more if I evoke it. And it's great with Fission, too. Or Empty Cage, remove two cards. Oh, that's right, we have a Pandora's Box, so there's nothing to remove. Okay, that's an easy Nuclear Battery for me, then. That Plasma Orb. We have a compile driver too, right? Yes, yes, we do. Good with that as well. 283 gold. We go maybe elite heavy here. Three elites this act. Feels pretty okay. I should take a bunch of combats at this point. We have a high upgraded card chance and the in-laws gift question card is going to be an extremely powerful combination when it comes to looking at stuff. No timing for Mind Bloom that works out. We're missing quite a few upgrades. Go this way. That's quite a bit better. Get one less store? I don't need two stores. How many events do I need? That's the real question. We could go zero, or I can go three. <laughs> events are good. Better than a combat. Take a couple events. Safe fight to double our algorithm in. No, Ojix, good question about the three keys. You have to deliberately path with those in mind. You get the green key from fighting an elite on the map that's got a flaming background to them. We did that in Act 1 on this run. But you have to deliberately go there to get it. The blue key will always appear in your chest. Anytime you're opening a treasure chest, you can skip the relic inside to get the blue key. And the red key always appears at fires to get for recalling. So it's only the green key that you have to accommodate for with your pathing. Four commons? It's a good boost to our rare chance, though.
45. Keep blocking. 45. A super helpful and uh, cozy chat here. I'm, I'm really proud of the collaborative learning environment and the friendly community that we've created. Everybody's always looking to help each other get better at the game, helping each other to have a good time. Great. Everybody chill. I mean, I'm not going to complain about taking more Frost, especially Frost at zero cost. Zero cost Frost. Rhymes. Alright, since we got a combat at the event, I'll take another event. Which is another combat? Hello? <laughs> Get out of here, you stinky jaw worms. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Learn that intangible stacks, it sure does, and that's what makes the Echo form really powerful in this deck, because we play the Apparition twice, and that gives us two turns of being invulnerable in a row. So good. Second Electro feels a little unnecessary, and it would only make us worse at the Awakened One fight. I'm gonna take it. trying to double the algorithm most of the time here. The moves that win the fight most quickly are a bit different looking. How about a lot of focus and a lot of lightning? Another glacier. There's definitely a limit to how many glaciers we want. Bonzi, thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome. The council. If we take too many frost orbs, we won't be able to do any damage, because we are reliant on lightning orbs for damage. So I'm suspicious of this glacier. Maybe that means I want a doom and gloom? No, I have no, uh... If that means I want another ball lightning. Alright. I'll take it. Six max elf?
This would give us a curse. And six max health. But then we remove the curse and lose three of it. Change him to something else. Here's what we're hoping to look like in the Awaken One fight. Something like that. The Mens the Zeppanir. Cycle could get rid of unwanted cards, though we don't have too many of those. And I think I said I wanted to go this way. We get to upgrade our Seek immediately this way. Two cards from the draw pile. We fight the Reptomancer. Way. It's not great. Hopefully this is a short fight. Play the bias on turn one. Actually relatively unfortunate that I played the capacitor. The extra orb slots prevent me from evoking the plasma. I'd be able to go Electro Echo Apparition had I done that differently. It's okay. We'll just try not to die next turn. He's a game, right? It's like we're drawing two with FTL doubled. Uh, this could get really bad really quickly. I think we have our double biased here. Now we need to look at two cards. We gotta find either Apparition or Genetic. Quickly. Good. Okay, good. Let's go Core Surge. Apparition. Vision makes for some really explosive turns, huh? Frozen Egg upgrades any powers we would add from here on out and a second Core Surge. To go with our second Bias Cog. It'll make the Awaken one a lot easier, won't it? Heat Sinks is not bad either. How many powers do we have? One, two, three, four, five. It's a lot of card draw represented by Heat Sinks. I think with the two biases, we just want another core surge, surely. Surely, right? Surely? We got our blue keys, so we get to take the Nunchaku. Then we play 10 attacks and gain 1 energy. Do desperate battle against the giant head.
should have done Ball Lightning and then played Tempest for zero there. Slightly better. Rust in the Brawl Pile. I'm gonna hold on to the Plasma for one more turn. Awinus, thank you so much for the Prime sub and the five months. Certainly appreciate that continued support. Vision time? I think it's vision time. Passed on a kunai, that's right. We did. It was stinky. invulnerable. Famous last words. had the relic stats on so I could track the in-laws gift. Oh man, Glacier plus Creative AI plus. Random powers every turn. Feels like we scale high enough that we don't need random powers. TT Sudo, thank you so much for the two months. That tier one sub. If you mean, do you mean all achievement speedrun, G? <laughs> I'm trying to picture a no achievements speedrun. I imagine it would be very fast. <laughs> yeah, all, all achievements? Uh, probably not, truthfully. Um, just because of how, how long that feat of endurance ends up being and, and how hard that is on my body, especially my wrist, to, uh, to play for such a long time at such a high speed. It took me quite a bit of recovery after the last one. Be faster than 20 minutes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. How about Glacier, man? Creative AI would let us dunk on the heart pretty easily, truthfully. Okay, we'll take this for heart. Because what we can do right now is survive like 12 turns really easily, but what we can't do is win in 12 turns. We don't have the damage output. This helps. Applying a lock on. Maybe didn't need to do that so fast. the energy.
long as you're doing consistent damage output, the transient's no threat. Reducing their damage output every time you damage them. Bit of a tit for tat situation. KO, but getting it below 500 is always a good sign for your heart fight. Yet another bonus rare card, Machine Learning Plus. Starts in our opening hand and gives us one additional card drawn per turn. I also really, really like a hologram. Get something out of the discard pile. Going into the Awakened One, who gets stronger every time we play a power, I don't think I can justify this Machine Learning. Especially since we're already carrying around a creative AI. Instead, I'm going to take this hologram to give us a bit of draw insurance. We're going to head on into the store. Buy several things here. First and foremost being the Bag of Preparation, giving us two more cards on turn one. Good stuff. But take another Capacitor here. Although theoretically we're okay with just duping the one we have. A Waffle could get us a lot of health. We won't have enough money for a rare relic at the next shop, no matter what. So quite a bit of health for the Awakened One. If Awakened One doesn't kill me, I don't think anything will. Let's do it. Go up to 62 max HP. Leave the rest for the next act. Relics that I'd be looking for, that I could afford? Gold-plated cables would have been a, a big one to see. Letting us activate our front orb one more time. That's uh, 250 gold, or would have been, had I not bought the thingy. We improve our matchup against Awakened One a lot by upgrading this chill. Mummified hand would be really good. Read the chill, especially with the bag of prep. Thanks for a really good turn one here. I'm not gonna play the Electro. Excuse you. there. Hey, this looks extremely good. times four versus 13 times six. Gain all the strength you'd like. Fun. We're passively blocking for more than the Awakened One could possibly hope to do, damage-wise. 
But now all we need to do is win. No need to stall excessively long in this fight. We can quite aggro here. Better leave with Pendiv on nine. Not Pendiv. Then Chaku. I guess I didn't need the waffle for that fight, huh? Pretty good. Who's next? The time slug, who I think will fare even worse than our awakened friend did. Although our core surges would be wasted if we played them right now. So we're gonna it's gonna be difficult to line up the, the core surge bias cog in this fight. It could be a challenge. Good luck to us. At least we have the data disk. The counter was where it is. So I'll just take a bunch of damage here. Yeah, we've got some turns to find our stuff. Using one focus per turn. And gain it back with Bowers. And more besides. Play all the powers. Do some damage.
GG. To thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. That's this part of the spire, the source of this eerie absence of potions. Six HP. We could could get back a few hit points for resting here, or we could upgrade one of our cards. I think the upgrade on the cool headed is probably most impactful. That or the electro for another lightning orb. Quidivia cannot generate the healing power self repair. Um, no sources of random card generation in Slay the Spire, be it Creative AI or Dead Branch or anything else, can generate anything that will heal you. Um, although the Bird Face turn can still heal you off of any powers that you generate. Let's go with the Electro Upgrade. That'll help us a lot in the Spire Spear and Spire Shield. Fight. Okay, loop plus here for 79 gold, another way to scale our orbs up a bit more. That's a pretty reasonable take. Could just remove a card, too. Would love a swift potion, but I can't. It's just gonna be loop here for me. Take that loop earlier to get this one. Can't afford double energy, can only afford the beam, which I don't want. Alright, onwards to the last couple of combats here. Fair bit is going to depend on draw order for this fight. Well, that's pretty good draw order. Extremely good draw order. Got Tempest too. Beautiful. Echo, Electro... I don't even need to play this Apparition. Biased, chill, cool-headed? Something like that? Of course, I only get to look at three cards next turn, and we could absolutely just die. Well, no, we can't die. Our Frost Herbs will save us. Cool-headed? Or would I rather do more damage? I'd rather do more damage. Whew. Very lucky. Very, very lucky. There's a lot of hands we could have had that would be much, much worse than this. Take it. Lose this lightning orb. Didn't play the thingy for the art of war too. Almost have the shield done. Almost. Okay. Grab all my orbs. Kill you next turn. It's hologram, all lightning and loop to make it zapify a bit harder. Good. Then set them to Shaku to nine. 
perfect fight. We get one last... Wow, Tori. One last reward from In-Laws Gift. Oh, what's that? It's an Echo Form Plus? How nice. Thank you, In-Laws Gift, for the amazing, amazing rare cards that we've gotten all run. Let's count rare cards here real quick. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rare cards in a 35 card deck. That's pretty. pretty sweet. Thanks, in law. This is also really good. Five rares in the opening hand. Pretty solid. Vision is plus three. Two more cards if I play the Glacier first, and we lose a lot of health too. I think I Glacier, Core Surge, Bias Cog, Fission. The other order that we can do is we go Core Surge, Bias Cog, Fission, Glacier, Echo Form, Creative AI, Chill. We get every card in play and we end with three Frost Orbs. We would take a bunch of Beat of Death damage to do that. But we have one bonus energy from Nunchaku and three from Evoking Plasma with Fission, so that's uh, nine energy to spend, which means we can play everything. Just can't tell if I want to Glacier first. That'll block all the Beat of Death. We get two less Frost Orbs, but we take much less damage and draw two more cards from Fission. And it's the two cards from Vision that's kind of selling at me on the idea of playing Glacier first here. They're gonna take the 67. I'm using Corsairs to block Bias Cog, not Corsairs to block Vulnerable. And two energy, but the two energy is what we would have spent on the Glacier. Well, I guess we're playing the Glacier anyway. But we want to get a play over what's already in the hand. What's the stuff we want to double, actually? I don't want to draw the apparitions. Yeah. Okay. Good, good way to phrase that. Take a bunch of beat to death and then win. Damn it! <laughs> That's why we play the Glacier first. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. bias just gain at 10 focus? I think so. Sure, we're losing two per turn, but... Whatever. Sure, that was the best play, but here we are. I'm gonna seek the Ascender's Bane of the Dazed. We need to get the Lightning in play.
Double hollow to get back something. Double electro for big damage. This should be safety for the next couple turns. Ooh, bullying plots. Certain draw cards, too. Uh, that is actually fine. In that case... And some debuff. Casual 154. It's double cold snap, double loop, double apparition? Yeah. Apparition first. This is happening. Zappity. E G. Wait. <laughs> okay, now GG. <laughs> GG. E G. Everybody. Got him. Making the Sozu start look outright easy there. Very surprised by how clean that run was overall. Hey, hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. Ta-ta for now.